General Obasanjo, President of Nigeria until 2007. And since then, a statesman spreading wisdom across Africa. And meanwhile, building his presidential library at home. But on the downside, he was suspected of corruption. So who is this man that has chicken farms across Nigeria and never wears a suit? Chief Obasanjo, servicing humanity and servicing God. An ordinary day in Abeokuta in western Nigeria. Chief Obasanjo attending visitors to his presidential library complex. Chief Obasanjo lives here in a 50-roomed mansion on a hilltop. Yes. <laughs> so we may get small snakes. <laughs> here he works, but he also relaxes, like watching television, enjoying Nigeria playing. It is this buzzing nation that Chief Obasanjo has been ruling as a president until 2007. Retirement in his home area, Abeokuta, seems not to be the option. Among other things, he is working on his presidential library building that has to house a permanent exhibition of his life history and his work as the president of Nigeria. In America, Every president from, from uh, Roosevelt uh, go into building a presidential library, which is taken over by a national agency to maintain and to run. And the president ceases, uh, ceases to be uh, the owner, although it's named after him, but it becomes a national treasure. As big it all might seem, Olushegun Obasanjo started small in a village as the son of a modest family. His parents couldn't afford their boy more education than primary school. And here, amidst the rural areas, there seemed not so much more to do for Obasanjo than join the army when he was 21 years old. Obasanjo rose fast in the ranks and became the commander of the unit that was crucial in ending the Biafra War that raged in Nigeria from 1967 to 1970. The Biafra War, often termed the Nigerian Civil War, started after the government moved against separatists that had declared their own Biafra state under command of Colonel Ojukwu. The Nigerian army tried to reclaim Biafra between 1967 and 1970. Then, Obasanjo as a commander was ordered to lead a unit to recapture Biafra, and that eventually led to the surrender of the secessionists. Formally, give up secession and report for reappointment 
and redeployment. Any future constitutional arrangement will be worked out by representatives of the people of Nigeria that the Republic of Biafra hereby ceases to exist. Although considered a war hero, Obasanjo had mixed feelings. To me, uh, having to use Nigerians to fight Nigerians uh, is not a pleasant uh, task, especially when the officers and men on the other side are people with whom you have grown up together, people you have trained together, people you have lived together. It, it is a, a harrowing experience. His role in securing Biafra made Obasanjo politically interesting for Nigeria. But according to Namdi Obasi, a senior Nigerian analyst of the International Crisis Group, his real ascension to power came six years later in 1976 when General Gowon was deposed by General Murtala Mohammed because of indiscipline and poor government performance. I think it was the fact that he came on the stage as part of the, what we used to call the Murtala Obasanjo administration, an administration that came out with very well-defined purposes and very well-defined goals and a very well-defined time frame about how long it was going to stay in office. So people thought there was a, a much more disciplined government and a much more purposeful government than the one before it. But Murtala Mohammed was assassinated in 1976 when bullets were fired at his car in an aborted coup. This made his chief of staff, Olushegun Obasanjo, military president of Nigeria. Obasanjo embarked on a policy of boosting the economy by reviving agriculture and by improving the oil sector. To facilitate exploitation of the oil fields in the Niger Delta, Obasanjo founded the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation that is a joint venture of the government and foreign oil companies. This joint venture made it possible that oil companies could receive military support from the government against protests from the local population. This led to Nigeria's first oil boom in the late 1970s. During these military years, President Obasanjo received his first opposition for giving too many favors to the army that allegedly was corrupt. Among the protesters was musician and activist Fela Kuti, criticizing the army and his album, Zombie. Fela passed away in 1997, but his son Femi remembers that 1,000 soldiers sent under Obasanjo's responsibility raided the compound of his father in Lagos on February 18, 1978. Fela's 78-year-old mother during this attack was thrown from a third floor window and died shortly afterwards. Her name was Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, and at the time, she was a well-known women's rights activist in Nigeria. Femi Kuti remembers that there was never an apology. They tried to settle out of court, from what I hear. But my father's lawyer, I think what they were trying to settle was maybe probably peanuts. And my father's lawyer advised, Tundi Britwin advised, they go to court and make it public. And then going public was when my father now lost the case and they said they can't identify who burned the house. But everybody knows soldiers burned the house down. Everybody knows what happened on that day. That's the, uh... It is after the 1997 presidential elections, General Obasanjo showed another face. He kept the pledge made by his predecessor, Murtala Mohammed, to hand over power to a civilian government. This made Shehu Shagari the first civilian president after 13 years of military rule. I welcome wholeheartedly and accept this great challenge and opportunity to serve my country as its chief executive. From across Africa and the international community, he was lauded for having done so. 
Obasanjo says he did that because of having strong belief in democracy. Democracy is not a perfect form of government. But in a society like our own, where we have multinational groups, um, the Yoruba, the House of Lani, the Igbos, and you have not less than 350 uh, different eth ethnic groups. Now, the best form of government is a government that allows for them to have a sense of participation that allows for them to discuss and debate and uh, dialogue. Uh, and democracy does that. I, I think Obasanjo Joy is a very wise man. I think he realized that um, every government, however good you are, will get to a point where you lose goodwill of the people. And therefore, it's better to quit the stage when the ovation is still loud or loudest. Obasanjo, at 41, retired from the military and engaged in a venture bringing him back home to the farmland around Abeokuta, where he originated from. As a believer in agriculture, he started a chicken farm. Now, 35 years later, there are Obasanjo chicken farms across Nigeria, and they became a household name. But despite Obasanjo's belief in democracy, Shagari was deposed after four years because of bad governance, making it look like Nigeria was not ready for democratic rule. Well, I won't look at it that way. I will put it this way, that once a country has been bedeviled by a coup, it takes some time. It takes some time. So what is needed is how to move that country from coup and coups, because coup becomes a musical chair. Uh, and that happened in Nigeria. Uh, those who removed uh, Shagari in 1983, uh, after some time, they had uh, internal uh, coup, or if you like, palace coup of their own. And then there was another coup. And uh, so, but, but it, what, what was important is for the military to be made to realize that coup is not an option. And after Shagari, mostly military presidents removed each other as a carousel, leaving the country in stagnation. The darkest period of Nigeria after Obasanjo's first rule was the military rule of Sani Abacha. I therefore expect of all of you at all times loyalty, good conduct and exemplary leadership qualities. Under Abacha, Obasanjo was accused of a coup attempt and was imprisoned. When in 1998 Sani Abacha suddenly died, Obasanjo was released and came back as president after the 1999 elections. And since then, there have been no more coups in Nigeria. So what I did was to say, look, anybody, any soldier or any military man that has benefited directly from a coup process should leave the uh, military. Um, they were uh, retired, they were not uh, punished uh, in the sense of saying you are uh, terminated or anything. But then it also sends a message that yet 
uh, coup is not tolerated. And any time you carry out a coup, there is still, uh, it can catch up with you. And it's caught up with people, about 93 officers were retired. During his presidencies, from 1999 to 2007, Obasanjo tried to improve the roads and transport system and to do something against power shortages. Obasanjo managed to boost the economy, but looking back, he considers his biggest failure that he couldn't have done more. Well, failure... <sighs> I wish I had got more money at the beginning of uh, my administration in 1999. When I came in, in 1999, the total revenue, um, reserve of Nigeria was $3.7 billion, uh, not enough to, uh, to pay for our um, uh, import of goods and services for three months. So that situation, uh, went on for almost four years. And the people we were applying to or we were uh, appealing to to come and invest in, um, in, in power generation were not responding enough. But, but by the time we got money coming in, the price of oil went up from about $9 a barrel uh, when we uh, came into uh, government to uh, over $40 uh, a barrel, um, then we were able to do a lot more than we, we could have done. And somehow, connected to power shortages, came allegations of corruption, seemingly inevitable for any African leader. In 2008, it showed that $16 billion was spent during Obasanjo's administration for electricity projects without significantly improving power supply. Obasanjo's possible involvement in embezzling funds was not proved, but not investigated either. A greater part of the revenue, country's revenue, is spent by the federal government, and therefore um, when you beam the such light of corruption on states and local governments, that is good enough, but then uh, perhaps you should do the same, if not more intensively, at the federal level. And if you're doing that at the federal level, then the president, more than anybody else, ought to be under constant scrutiny. And we've never quite had that, either under our messenger or under subsequent presidents. Femi Kuti thinks Obasanjo has to go to court to be investigated for corruption, but fears that will never happen. Because Nigeria is too corrupt. <laughs> and everybody involved that. Everybody that will be involved in, there is no honest government that has the authorization to bring past leaders to court. And this shows a president that during his career endured and survived several setbacks. Ayo Adewale is a Nigerian businessman who worked for Obasanjo for the last 20 years in his African Leadership Forum. He knows very well how he can react to setbacks. Sometimes he takes it on his chin, and then there are times he lets go. Hula, and you better have a heart if he really decides to explode on you. That's you perfect. better, yes, when he screams at you like, you know, like a regimental sergeant major on a parade ground or in the barrack, you know, that kind of, you feel like the whole world is going to crash on your head. So, if you're not strong, really, if you don't have the capacity to take it on the chin and just say it's just another day in the office. But overall, Adewale says the president is amicable if you respect the Obasanjo ground rules. You have to be very hardworking. If you guys are going to get along, have to be very hard working. That's important. Number two, be honest with him. Don't play games with, don't play games, don't try to be clever with him. No matter how bad any situation is, one thing I've learned, 
is to give it to him straight. No games, nothing. Now, you know, he will tell you, you cannot over inform him. You can only under inform him. When he asks you, give him a straight answer. Straight from the gods. No mollycoddling, no lies, no attempts to put something on it. Don't try to hide the situation from me. Just tell him. Look, the worst that it will happen is he's going to scream at you and you think the whole world is coming on your head, but his back is actually worse than his bite. And when looking at pictures of Obasanjo next to the world leaders of his time, another aspect of his personality appears. He is not seen anywhere in a suit. No, no, he doesn't have one. He may have gone around the whole world and all of that. The essential of Basanjo never left Ibogun's village. I believe that your culture is also part of your identity. And that is something that you should never allow to be taken away from you, which includes your name, your food, your dance, please, and your dress. So, um, by my upbringing, I'm a man who cherish uh, culture and tradition. This makes Obasanjo differ from other African leaders that only occasionally wear traditional dresses. Like South African President Zuma, who doesn't do that outside his own country. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the dress that he wears uh, when he goes on uh, occasions of tradition and all that, maybe uh, it's, not, um, uh, it's not as easy to wear when he goes out because they, are, they, 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 they have uh, uh, animal skin and, and, and all that along with them. Uh, I, I, I think in our own part, um, we probably is, we have lost uh, the uh, culture of animal skin many, many years ago. Because as you said, I can wear my dress anywhere in the world. Occasionally it gets cold, so I try to uh, we have some form of thermal uh, underwear. <laughs> Why not? Please. He is very comfortable with Olusheg Mobasanjo. He is totally at home with it. This absolute comfort in oneself reflects on Obasanjo's current construction of the so-called presidential library in Abeokuta. He has assembled a complex of sites creating revenue that is used to pay for the completion of the main building that will contain literature and memorabilia of Obasanjo's life and work. The project was initiated in 2005, and the cost is now estimated at $55 million and received a fair amount of comments within Nigeria for being too expensive while there were more urgent needs. It's not government money, so I, I will not go and get donation and start building road. Um, I, 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 people have donated from within Nigeria, from outside Nigeria. When you remember these things, then it, uh, it, it instructs the present and it also inspires the future. It is necessary. Not surprisingly, a part of the exhibition is to highlight the ups and downs of Obasanjo's career and focusing on what he sees as his biggest achievement. Keeping Nigeria together and keeping it as prosperous as we could at that time that we had the opportunity. Because by the time I came, some people said I would be the last president of Nigeria, believing that Nigeria will break up. Some people said, well, um, you will not even last one year. I lasted eight years. Um, and after me, two presidents have come. And I pray and hope that 
more president will continue to come to sustain this uh, democracy. It is since 2007 that Obasanjo left his country with an infrastructure that made it become the first economy on the African continent, having surpassed South Africa. But it is not calm in Nigeria. With an insurgency of the extremist movement Boko Haram claiming responsibility for terrorist attacks across Nigeria and the abduction of a hundred schoolgirls, Obasanjo hopes these events won't lead to another coup. I hope that our leaders will make sure that the problems that we have are not problems that are brought about by their own self-centeredness or their own selfishness, that these problems that may normally emanate from interaction with, of people within a nation will be resolved, um, and then coup will be permanently put behind us in, in this country and indeed in the rest of Africa. So Obasanjo doesn't mind mingling in politics. For example, by sending his critical 2013 open letter to Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan, then he is a member of the Africa Progress Panel, chaired by Kofi Annan, supporting development across the African continent. For example, here in Dakar, in Senegal, during an anti-drug conference. West African leaders must act courageously to protect their societies. According to the International Crisis Group, Chief Obasanjo performed reasonably well as an African leader. I think he must be given some credit as an African leader, um, first setting a very good example of um, a military government stepping out of um, office. Uh, yes, he does get some good credit for that. Um, we must also credit him for the fact that at the time he was civilian president, he did provide some leadership. There was some vigor about foreign policy, about connecting with other African leaders. Is a kind of person, is the type of leader that spots the talent, recognizes the talent, gives you the space to showcase your talent within a particular framework. And that's what he does. If you look throughout all his time in government, that's what he did with the majority of the people, the ministers and the heads of the various special agencies that that he had. And that was why they were able to perform and excel. And that was why they were able to bring out the best that is in them. On the flip side, yeah, people would also say that, um, uh, first of all, he, he dented um, his image by trying to go for a third term, which is, uh, he has constantly denied, consistently denied, but which um, from all indications was actually the case. And then there is also the feeling that for the eight years he spent governing Nigeria, he could have done you know, a lot more, but obviously he is, will be always respected as a leader and a, a, a remarkable one, not only in Nigeria but in Africa as a whole. My interest has been to have a life of service, and I believe God has given me opportunity to be able to um, live a life of service, um, and, and that's until I die, I will want to continue to live a life of service. And that is what I believe uh, my life should consist of, doing service to humanity and, of course, service to God.